anticipation anxiety. I have a great question from Deborah today. She is asking how to turn off the inner voice that says you're not in control of your own safety, even though that's not entirely true. I wear a helmet, a vest, boots, do my groundwork, can bend to a stop, etc., etc. A really valid question, hey, and something that comes up a lot around anxiety, this anticipation anxiety and the voice of the itty bitty shitty committee that really can go on overdrive when we start to feel concerned for our own safety. And that base need to feel safe is such a primal one, you know, and such a valid one too in so many ways. So it is really walking that line between understanding Here it is, you know, I've done all the work that I can do to get myself into a place where I've essentially controlled the controllables and I've taken care of what needs to be taken care of to make sure that my horse can manage him or herself. And now what I have to do is get into a place where I am also managing myself. And anticipation anxiety is us essentially getting ahead of ourselves. It's leaving our bodies, you know, leaving our hearts and sending our minds to a future focused place where we tend to focus on the worst case scenario or at least something that we don't want to happen. What we know about the unconscious mind is that it receives all of its information via the sensory system. So when we are able to check in or clock in on a future event with enough clarity mentally and emotionally for our unconscious mind to register that as real then we feel anxiety in the present moment even if our surroundings and everything essentially that is happening right now is very removed from what it is that we are concerned about so that's typically the cycle of anticipation anxiety the other thing that happens with anxiety is that it fuels itself you know it breeds on itself and this is true for any kind of thought based um, pathway so we know that neurons that fire together wire together which means the more you think a particular thought or a particular way of thinking the easier it is to default to that way of thinking so if you start to think anxious thoughts and you cultivate more anxious thoughts then it becomes easier to think anxious thoughts because that is the strongest thought pathway in your mind you've essentially primed yourself to feel anxiety so the question harking back to the question which is how to turn off that inner voice we can't really turn off the inner voice because The inner voice is an expression of us hitting the outer parameters of our comfort zone, especially the itty bitty shitty committee. You know, when that voice kicks in, then we know that we are doing something which is pushing the bar a little bit. Now, the way that we distinguish between those two voices, because there isn't just one voice, you know, that internal dialogue that we have with ourselves, it's not always the itty bitty shitty committee. There is other um, conversation that is valid and reasonable that we have with ourselves as well. It's just often the voice of the um, of the committee is the loudest. So what I well, the kind of modus operandi that I use to distinguish between them is that when the feedback or the criticism is intensely personal so it's like you can't do this you're stupid you know who do you think you are that is really typical of the itty bitty shitty committee and there is no value feedback that we can take from that there's nothing within that narrative that i can actually take and apply to positive benefit moving forward However, if there was a question that came up in my mind that asked me, you know, do you have what it takes to see this through or are you prepared enough to involve yourself in this situation, then that's something that I would pay attention to. It might not necessarily be true, like the answer might be, yes, I am totally prepared or yes, I do have what it takes. But it it doesn't mean that there isn't um, a pause that we can invite at that place to actually say, you know what, this is okay, I, I am able to do this. So those things become quite blurred. And in the case of anticipation anxiety, typically what happens is that we we lose our objectivity with our thinking. 
we believe with wholehearted, <laughs> you know, in a very wholehearted way, all of the crap that goes through our mind. We believe all of the bad potential stuff that might come up. But when someone offers us the possibility that it might be different, we find it very hard to attach ourselves to those thoughts. So we're picking and choosing the thoughts that appeal to us depending on what framework it is we're operating from. Now, the thing about anticipation anxiety is it also gives us this false sense of security that if we somehow think anxious thoughts or we preempt every possible negative situation that happens, that that is protecting us in some way. But that is a false philosophy. You know, that isn't actually true. And what we need to recognize is that whether we choose to focus on the potential bad things that might happen or the potential good things that might happen, both of those essentially are imagined possibilities. But our point of power exists right now to decide where it is we're going to invest our energy because whether we choose option A or option B does really determine the, um, the decisions that we make and the amount of effort that we invest in what it is we're doing moving forward. And as a consequence of that, we get a different result, a very different result, which essentially proves us right in one direction or the other. So in the case of anticipation anxiety, we need to realize that is there any value valid information that's coming off the back of this conversation that I'm having with myself or this anxious feeling that I'm having because we don't want to deny or suppress that you know I'm, I'm very much into honoring emotions but that doesn't mean that we aren't able to have discernment in the midst of that experience to say this is not true for me you know this is something that I'm feeling um, as a re result of a story that I'm involving myself in or as a result of habitual uh, patterned behavior that has caused me to feel anxious on a regular basis. So if that's the case and you're like, okay, this actual thought stream is not serving me right now and is just something that is constantly getting in my way, then A, you can recognize that you have conceivably done all of the work that you can do to make sure that you've ticked all of the boxes that are possible for you to tick. When that's done, then it's actually that leap of faith to say, right, what's getting in the way right now is me. What's getting in, in the way is my inability to control where it is my focus is going. And so redirecting your focus to what it is you want is absolutely the first port of call. So if we understand that creation of anticipation anxiety is actually um, happening because we are vividly imagining something that we don't want to happen coming to life, we can understand that the creation of the opposite is also possible by really attaching ourselves to what it is that we want in a way that has as much engagement and enthusiasm as we have attached ourselves to what it is that we don't want. So in that case, ask yourself some really high quality questions. You know, how is it or what is it that my horse needs me to be right now? What is it that I want? What would it take for me to feel confident right now? And ask those sorts of questions so you can start to direct your focus towards the outcomes that you want to create and away from what it is that you're trying to avoid.